which is the best gas boiler in the UK in 2020. Is it Worcester? Is it Valen? Or is it even Baxi? Well, my name's Derek Robbins from Tomcat Gas Training, and if you stick around with this video, hopefully that's what you're going to find out. What is the best gas boiler in the UK in 2020? You know, let's get on with it. Heating accounts for about 55% of the energy a customer will use in a year on their energy bills. So a high efficient gas boiler is very, very important. There are about 1.5 million boilers installed in UK homes every year. That's 7.5 million over five years. So surely by now we should know which is the best gas boiler in the UK. The average installation cost of a gas boiler in the UK is about 1800 quid and that's combi boiler swap. But if we're going for um, system boilers or heat only boilers using cylinders and vented cylinders then this could be up to about three grand. Boilers are however the heart of the house so picking the right boiler and more importantly the correct boiler is vital. New boilers are expected to last between 15 and 20 years. So picking the right boiler is paramount for the customer satisfaction and saving our planet. The first question we need to ask ourselves is what type of boiler do we require for the type of house we live in? There are three types of boilers used in the UK. The most popular one is the combi boiler. Then system boiler. And finally heat only boiler. And we'll have a look at the different types as we're going along. So we need to ask ourselves, is a combi boiler, the most common boiler sold in the UK, the right boiler for me? Combi boilers don't require a hot water cylinder for your hot water or feed systems which are up in your loft. They heat the water on demand from the town's mains and they minimise the wastage of heating up stored water. So water in a cylinder which we might not use, so say heating a 150 litre cylinder up and you're not having a bath. So these are the things we need to be thinking about when we need to save our planet. But heating hot water on demand doesn't always mean they are the right boiler for you and the right boiler for your house. Typically, if you've only got one bathroom and you live in a two bedroom or three bedroom house, then typically that would be the best boiler for your house. So as you can see, it's not the brand of the boiler, Worcester, Valen, Baxi, it's the type of the boiler, combi, heat only system, which would be the best boiler for you and for your home. The combi boiler, or to give her its full name, the combination boiler, is the name given to a boiler that heats central heating and heats the water instantaneously at the hot tap. The other types as we've been looking at them, the uh, system boiler, which is basically a combi boiler without any way of heating the hot water. It does have things like a pump and expansion vessel like a combi boiler does. Um, but you need a hot water cylinder or a unvented cylinder to heat your hot water. And that's the same for a regular or heat only boiler, sometimes known as a conventional boiler, which has nothing in it, only really um, the burner and the heat exchanger. And all the external controls, the pump, expansion vessel and controls, cylinders, would be needed to be separate from the boiler. With the combi boiler though, it normally gives you a greater pressure at the taps than you would actually get from a heat only boiler with a vented cylinder. But that's not necessarily true if you've got an unvented cylinder, because unvented cylinders are also piped direct off the mains, so they would give you the same pressure as your cold. So the combi boiler is one of the most common boilers because of its price range. It probably is the cheapest boiler to buy out there, even though it has the most parts inside it, 
because it's basically because of demand. So this combi fits into most people's budget. It also helps to uh, save the planet from the CO2, but doesn't necessarily save the planet with the usage of the water because when you run the hot tap, the hot water flows through quite a lot before you actually get any water what's hot coming through the tap. Now choosing the right size of combi boiler or combination boiler can be quite bewildering for homeowners and newly qualified engineers. Combi boilers range in size from 24 kilowatts up to 50 kilowatts at the moment. As a rough estimate for a small flat, say a one or two bedroom flat with one bathroom, a 24 to 27 kilowatt boiler would be sufficient to give you your hot water needs. A medium to large house, say three to four bedrooms, with one bathroom would probably need a 28 to 35 kilowatt boiler and for the large houses with one bathroom and one ensuite then you're probably looking for 35 to 50 kilowatts for this combination boiler. Now for properties with a higher demand for hot water then obviously the higher kilowatts going to be required for a combi boiler to cope with the demand for the water flowing through to the taps. However, combination boilers are not very good at coping with two showers running at the same time due to the usage of the water across the two showers. If this is the case, then this, which is a, an unvented hot water cylinder, and this above me, which is a heat only boiler, you could actually use a system boiler, would be a better choice rather than a combi boiler for your property. So if you've got two bathrooms where you want to run two showers at the same time, then this is what you're going to be requiring, not a combi boiler. So who invented this combination boiler then? So there are two contenders for who invented the combination boiler. The first one is Junkers, who was a German manufacturer whose British arm of the company was called Ascot, which was founded in London by Dr. Bernard Friedman. After the Second World War, the Germans continued the development of the separate boiler and hot water heater and decided to put them together. So the German giant manufacturer Valent, these are the four Valents behind me, were one of the first ones to produce and introduce the combi boiler in the very early 1960s. Another company who was in on the act very early on was a French manufacturer called Chaffeteau, who are now part of the Ariston Thermo Group, produced the first real, as we know it, combination boiler in 1963. In the late 1990s saw the development and the introduction of the condensing boiler in the UK. When the condensing boiler was introduced it had to be efficient between 89 and 94% under factory test conditions. This was a vast improvement on the old open fluid boilers which could lose up to 40% of its energy up the flue. Since the 1st of April 2007 it has been a regulation in England and Wales that all boilers manufactured and installed in the UK must be condensing boilers. The condensing boiler was a great technological leap forward and one which should have made a huge contribution to meeting our reduction in emissions target for 2025. The unspoken truth though is 90% of condensing boilers out there almost never achieve their efficiency targets. This is mainly for two reasons. The first one, the boilers being oversized, and the second one, the system in which the boiler is installed on. I mean, basically the radiators, the pipework, and the rest of the system. So nowadays, we need to be making sure that these boilers we install reach the efficiency targets and continue to be efficient and continue to condense no matter how long they've been running. Now, what I've got behind me here are two condensing boilers. This one to my left is one of the band A condensing boilers and this is what we call the crossover boiler where this was a band B boiler. This boiler has not been allowed to be installed since 2007 in the UK when we went to band A's only. So basically what this was was the manufacturers were given a couple of years to get rid of their old stock 
and what they did to try and make them condensing was add a secondary heat exchanger here this is where the boiler would condense in here so the return water would come to here the flue then would preheat the water coming back in so it would only condense in central heating mode so this is an atmospheric burner which was only about at its best 89 percent efficient now the boiler on the left hand side is what we call a band a boiler this is what we call a pre-mixed boiler so what it does is it sucks the gas and air in and makes it more efficient so this boiler at its worst is probably 92 93 percent efficient so that's what happened with boilers in 2007 we had to have this crossover where we got rid of the non-condensing to condensing we got rid of the band b to band a boilers so all boilers now are band a boilers they're all condensing and they all have to be more than 93 percent efficient now to comply with the new regulation when this one was out we had what was called said book rating the seasonal efficiency of boilers in the uk which now no longer exists these boilers now have to comply to boiler plus which is boiler plus controls now one of the biggest problems what happens with choosing the correct boiler for the house is actually oversizing the boiler what's required so a few things what happens with oversizing the boiler first of all oversizing the boiler makes the boiler more expensive than it should be which in turn will make them more expensive to run and again will make them worse for the environment so they're the main problems with oversizing boilers yet oversized boilers are present in most homes in the uk According to the Energy Saving Trust, the average heat output for a boiler in February in the UK, the average house will require between 6 and 8 kilowatts to heat that house. But we find boilers frequently three times the size of this in the UK. As we now know, all boilers in the UK have to have a minimum of 93% efficient without the controls. And then the controls have to make them over 96% efficient. But the unspoken truth is, due to oversizing the boilers and lack of controls, is actually making things worse. So with the correct size boiler and the correct control, a vast majority of homes in the UK could save between 10 and 25% on their fuel bill over the year. It's not just getting the correct boiler and the correct controls, it's also teaching the customers how to use their controls effectively. Now that's the biggest problem <laughs> we have as engineers is getting the customer to use their boiler and controls in the correct manner they're supposed to be used to. So how does this oversizing happen then? So the average three bedroom house will have between 18 and 24 kilowatt boiler installed in it. Combi boilers though only start at 24 kilowatts up to 50 kilowatts. So straight away we could be oversizing if we put a combi boiler in. But remember to heat the hot water on a combi boiler, depending on what demand you require, you will require high kilowatt output. So as we have found out, the average home in the UK in the middle of our winter requires between 6 and 8 kilowatts to heat the room. But obviously depending on your output of your water will depend on what kilowatts if you have a combi boiler fitted will depend on what you need there. Also if you have a cylinder as well, depending on the size of the cylinder, whether it's vented or unvented, will also require bigger kilowatts for a bigger cylinder. Something like a 300 litre unvented hot water cylinder will require a heating coil of 24 kilowatts. So that gives you the idea of the size of the boiler required for that. One of the things what's happening more frequently these days is engineers giving estimates over the phone or customers going onto the internet and putting their details in there and getting a quotation without the engineer actually coming to the house. So what's happening now is engineers are guesstimating or doing a rule of thumb they're guessing the size of the boiler that you require and they're always oversizing because one of the things we don't want to happen is a customer complaining the boiler is too small. Putting in this boiler though, what is too big for the house, makes the boiler cycle on central heating. So what do we mean by cycling? So it basically means the boiler heats up too quickly and then knocks off and then runs up too quickly again and then knocks off because it's overheating. So what the boiler is doing instead of running a nice steady temperature 
it's going up and down in a curve trying to get rid of the heat where it's produced. This is not very good for the environment and certainly not very good for your fuel bill. So this stop start cycle uses a lot more gas and also puts a lot more strain on the components within the boiler so the life of the boiler will be expected to go from 15 years down to at least 10 years just because you've oversized the boiler. So as we can see, a boiler running at its most efficient will be a boiler what can run at its lowest temperature for the longest time without knocking off. So just remember, an oversized boiler will cycle, a, a cycling boiler will use more gas, and a cycling boiler will definitely not last as long as a boiler which runs at a low rate for a long time. So oversizing this boiler is not good for the customer, is not good for the environment, and is not good for the boiler. The other big barrier to achieve this factory setting of efficiency is the introduction of the central heating controls. Now, for a combi boiler, the best heating controls you can ever fit will be the controls from the manufacturer, in my opinion, because these controls will be able to speak the language of the boiler and be able to run the boiler at its most efficient. We would all be forgiven for thinking that by investing in smart controls, we would be benefiting from greater efficiencies. However, maximum efficiencies on boilers will only be achieved when the boiler is connected to weather compensation. That means a stat that is telling the boiler what the temperature of the outside is. So most smart thermostats use weather stations to be able to achieve this. Weather compensation adjusts the boiler up and down as the outside temperature increases up or goes down. They make the boiler incredibly efficient, but they also speak the language of the boiler. So we have a situation in the UK where most smart controls are not set up to speak the language of the boiler. So like I say, the best option for the customer and the best option for the engineer will always install the controls which are laid down by the manufacturer of the boiler. It makes it a lot easier to install and it makes it a lot easier for the customer to work. The language, what these boilers speak, is called open therm, or some call it eBus and other manufacturers have other names for this. So make sure when you're installing or purchasing a new boiler, you've got controls which speak open therm or eBus or MBus or what other language the boiler is speaking to the controls. All engineers should know that the introduction of smart controls should increase the efficiency of the boiler they've just installed. The introduction of these smart controls has driven sales in this sector with high expectations of energy savings. But once again, things might not be what they should be. Now all boilers now are what's called modulating boilers. That means they have a computer brain in them. What the computer brain does using thermistors, which regulates the flow and return temperatures of the boiler, will reduce the gas when the return temperature is, starts to get high. So when they initially start up, depending if you've got weather compensation, because what WeatherCom does is it says with the outside temperature, whether it needs to go into full burn or not. And what it'll do is the brain will tell the boiler how much it needs to run. And it does that in these type of boilers by using the fan speed. The faster the fan goes, the more gas it draws into the boiler, the more energy that boiler is using. So the use of smart controls is incredibly important now to make the efficiency of these boilers at their best. Now this open therm was invented by Honeywell and has been made available for all manufacturers to use. Now a recent study out of 28 heating controls, 74% of them were using the manufacturer's controls, the rest was using open therm. Now if we look at this uh, printed circuit board on this Ariston boiler, we can see these are our connections at the top here. Now, always remember guys, never open this up unless you've done, followed your safe isolation procedures. Because one thing you don't want to be doing is sticking your fingers in and getting electrocuted. This has been tested, 
this is dead there is no power going to this printed circuit board so we can see here this is where our power comes in so this is our in the uk we've got two uh, 20 to 250 volts ac alternating current to 50 hertz now this on the ariston is all low voltage now you can see this ta1 here this is where non ariston thermostats get connected so any stat here which isn't an ariston stat would go into this section here this orange one is their bus connection and this is their open therm bus connection so this is where they would connect on it so typically using open therm can provide you with around six percent energy savings on top of anything that the smart thermostat can do anyway exact figures will depend upon the home the number of the radiators the heating temperature and whether or not the individual smart radiator valves have been installed on the system so you can actually get smart radiator stats now as well in the UK users save around 19% of their energy bills in Germany though when they use theirs they save around 25% so we're lagging behind the Germans so that is for this Ariston boiler all of the boilers you must read the manufacturer's instructions and you must check and see what they're asking for and what they do with their connections for eBus they're not all the same now we've been going on about modulation all modern boilers like I say modulate but they don't modulate all down to the same kilowatt so you could have say a, a 24 kilowatt boiler which modulates down to 4 kilowatts on the on the lowest setting or you could have a 30 kilowatt what modulates down to two and a half kilowatt so in a small house the bigger boiler would be more efficient because you would be able to modulate it down to a lower rate that sounds a bit weird but that's how it works so where combis are concerned the high kilowatts for the water is good but if it's got a low modulation as well that's even better but and this is the big but which a lot of engineers don't do is they don't modulate the boilers down on central heating they leave them on full WAP so that means they're not saving any energy and they're not saving the environment and they're not saving the planet so actually fully commissioning the boiler correctly is the only way with the controls you are going to save this energy and this planet now most of our customers pay little attention to the health of their boiler until it stops working the high cost of fixing this problem could have been averted by just having the boiler checked and serviced every year little is understood about the damage that is caused by problems with system water by most engineers but when engineers find the boilers in poor condition they normally say to the customer you need a new boiler this can all be averted by just having the boiler serviced and the system water checked regularly now according to the new benchmark scheme when you service a boiler now you must check the water quality for its ph level to see whether in any inhibitor needs to be added and then every five years it will need to be redosed we frequently hear about sludge in our radiators and in our central heating systems sludge refers to the corroded metal in our system which is commonly known as magnetite this magnetite eventually blocks radiators and blocks plate to plate heat exchanges in the boiler which makes the boilers very inefficient and damages the system corrosion occurs in a central heating system in two ways one two dissimilar metals creating electrolysis and two air being drawn into the system through fittings or radiator valves or tiny leaks which could be air leaks but not water leaks now a vented system used to be able to get rid of this air but new sealed systems have problems getting rid of the air what's floating around in the system they use automatic automatic air vents on the back of pumps which don't work very well when pumps cavitate they create air and this is the air what's going around the system and this is what creates this corrosion so this is why it's important that we install inhibitors and these magnetic filters to stop this corrosion happening so as this sludge builds up it creates problems in the system it makes the boiler work harder so it wastes heat it wastes energy and it damages the planet for more than a decade now the standard solution for magnetite is fit a magnetic filter power flush or magnet cleanser system and then put inhibitor in 
So we are treating the problem, we are not creating a cure. Fitting a deaerator into the system is just as important as fitting one of these magnetic filters. So this deaerator will remove the air in the system which will also stop corrosion. And this technically would remove the need for dosing inhibitor. But we must dose inhibitor to comply with the current regulations. Another way of prolonging the life of this boiler and this system is balancing radiators. So let's have a look at that. Now balancing the system for most of us just means that it's the flow of the water which goes around the system which makes all the radiators get hot at the same time. This was fine for old central heating systems, but for new central heating systems to be 93% efficient, then the heat from the radiators needs to be checked and balanced by the use of one of these, an analyzer which can take temperatures of the flow and return. You can also use thermometers for doing this. Now, a lot of engineers think just going to the nearest radiator to the boiler and screwing it all the way down and turning it back a quarter of a turn and then going to the next one and screwing it half a turn is the way to balance a system. But the correct way of balancing a system will be having a difference between the flow and return temperatures of between 10 and 12 degrees. That will give us the best system. Now, you tuned into this video to find out which is the best boiler in the market in the UK for 2020. And I've batted on about central heating systems and I've not even mentioned boilers yet. So I guess you're getting from this video that it's not all about the boiler which is the best boiler. Because you can put any boiler on the system. You can spend a thousand, you can spend two thousand pounds on a boiler, but if you don't set the system up correctly and you don't get rid of sludge and you don't have the boiler serviced every 12 months, what's the Point. Now, there's loads of different brands out there in the UK. Baxi, Valent, Wiesman, Worcester, Glowworm, Faroli, Sonia Duvat. There's loads of manufacturers out there, but if you're getting what I'm trying to put over from this video is, it's not the brand, it's which boiler is good for you. But, you've tuned into this video to find out which is the best boiler in the UK in 2020. So let's have a look at the best five selling boilers in the UK at the moment. Worcester Bosch has an excellent reputation in the UK for its build quality, which has made them the market leader. Worcester have just introduced a brand new range of boilers to continue their market leading success with the introduction of the Lifestyle. Life being the cheaper version, style being the most expensive. Worcester are also changing their full range of boilers over the next few years so they can still compete and still be the market leader in the UK. Worcester was formed in the old vinegar works in Worcester in 1962 and in 1996 they became part of the giant German company of Bosch to become Worcester Bosch the name we all know today. Which magazine recommends Worcester Bosch boilers for their great build quality and the reputation they have in the UK market? The Worcester Bosch boilers come with a five year warranty, but if you're an accredited installer, this can be increased to 10 years. But the lifestyle, if you're an accredited installer, can be 12 years. To keep your warranty though, you must have your boiler serviced every 12 months. This isn't just a Worcester standard, this is an industry standard throughout all manufacturers. Pros and cons of the boiler, so the pros first. As I've said, Worcester are the market leaders in the UK. The boilers are easy to install and you have great access to Worcester's technical help and after sales service. Like I said, the warranties come to five to 12 years depending on the boiler or whether you are an accredited installer or not. The ERP rating for all their range of boilers is now A. Worcester have an excellent witch report and trusted pilot reviews. Worcester have seven different ranges of combi boilers. The cons for the Worcester boiler, one of the main ones is breaking down and leaking on the hydro block. They are one of the most expensive boilers on the market but parts are reasonably cheap for them. It has an aluminium heat exchanger and you have to be an accredited installer to be able to give the 10 or 12 year warranty. So that's a quick look at Worcester Bosch who are the market leader in the UK. 
Valent boilers have built a great reputation over the last 140 years for building quality boilers. They are a German family owned company and as we have found out are one of the inventors of the combi boiler. The Valent group owns other boiler manufacturers such as Glowworm, Heatline and Sonia Duval. As with the Worcester boiler, the Valent comes up as a Witch magazine best buy. And therefore, the Valent boilers are one of the top choices in the UK. The main issue with the Valent Ecotech range of boilers, first, they are very expensive to purchase, and second, spare parts are also incredibly expensive. The biggest problem we seem to find with the Ecotech range of Valent boilers is faulty diverter valves. But again, this might not be a manufacturing issue, this might be an installation issue where installers are installing brand new boilers on a 30 year old dirty system. So let's look at the pros and cons of the Valent Group's boilers. First of all, let's look at the pros. Most of the boilers come with a five year warranty. Some of the top end come with seven year warranties and these can be extended to 10 or 12 years if the installer is accredited and you pay extra money for it. Again, the ERP rating is A. They are a quality manufactured boiler in the UK with a great reputation. They are one of the most quietest boilers in the UK market, so they're good for installing in bedrooms. And Valent do have a boiler with a built-in heat flue recovery system called the Valent IQ. Let's have a look at the cons. Now the high-end boilers come with a stainless steel heat exchanger, but the low-end boilers come with an aluminium heat exchanger. So there's kind of a pro and a con there. Phelan get a lot of complaints about faulty boilers, but again, a lot of this is due to dirty systems. Again, the breakdown on the diverter valves is very, very common. And again, this is always due to dirty systems. And as we've said, they're very expensive to purchase and spare parts are also incredibly expensive. So that's the pros and cons of the Valent boiler. Now that's a quick look at the Valent Group's boilers. Let's have a look at Ideal boilers. Ideal are a whole based British manufacturer that was founded in 1905. Ideal introduced a cost effective solution for installing central heating across the UK and have continued to do this by producing boilers in the low to mid end of the market. Some years ago, Ideal had a lot of issues with a range of their boilers called the ICOS and the ISAR, which made Ideal go back to the drawing board and they produced a new range of boilers called the Logic range. The Logic range itself has had a few issues with things like leaking sumps, which Ideal have now fixed, and Ideal now are competing for a major share in the market. Ideal have recently been taken over by French company Group Atlantic, and as the leaders in France for air source heat pumps, they see this partnership as a good strategic move for the company and their customers. Let's have a look at the pros and cons. Let's have a look at the pros first. As we've said, they're a whole based British manufacturer. They are known as the affordable brand of boilers. They are award winning for their innovations. They have a good reputation in the UK for their long manufacturing history. They have a lot of low priced boilers. The boilers are small and compact and can fit in most kitchen cupboards. And they have warranties between 7 and 10 years which is dependent upon the installer being accredited. The cons now. Due to the leaking sump, they got a bad witch report and they have bad reviews on Trustpilot. As we keep saying, they have a lot of breakdowns on the full boiler range on the sump. They had a very bad reputation from the ISAR and the ICOS range of boilers, which is now starting to improve due to the logic range. Most of the heat exchanges on the ideal range of boilers are made of aluminium, but they do have a high-end boiler called the Vogue, Gen 2, which has a stainless steel heat exchanger, which can compete with most of the top end boilers in the market. That's a quick look at the ideal range of boilers. Let's have a look at Baxi. Baxi is part of the Thermo Group and manufactures boilers worldwide. 
The company was founded by Richard Baxendale way back in 1866 when he opened the doors to his foundry. Baxi became a well-loved manufacturer in the UK in the 60s, 70s and 80s when they introduced the world to the Bermuda Bat Boiler. But things have kind of changed these days. They profess to make boilers which are very easy to install, which are easy to maintain and very efficient. But the reviews on which magazine and Trusted Pilot kind of tell a different story and customers have had a lot of complaints about the Baxi boilers. Baxi is a part of a large manufacturing organisation which manufactures other boilers such as Potterton, Main and Heat Race Adia, just to name a few. They have warranties which range from 3, 7 and 10 years depending on which boiler you buy whether it's a Baxi, Main or a Potterton. And Baxi have just introduced a brand new range of boilers which are 200, 400 and 600. Let's have a look at the pros and the cons of the Baxi boiler. Let's have a look at the pros first. Again, the boilers are manufactured in the UK. Baxi are also known as the affordable brand of boilers. They are a well-known brand of boilers in the UK due to their long history of manufacturing. They have low-priced option boilers. They have stainless steel heat exchangers. Now let's have a look at the cons. Lots of complaints on Trustpilot due to the boilers being unreliable even from first installing. Infamous for bad customer service. Very confusing warranty options. They have lower efficiency and lower reliability than other major manufacturers. They have too many different types of combi boilers over too many different brands, all being and all looking exactly the same. So that's a look at the Baxi boilers. Let's finish off and have a look at Wiesmann. Wiesmann are not a very well known brand in the UK. But over the last few years, there's been a very big surge in popularity for the brand. Wiesmann was formed in Germany in 1917 and has become one of the major brands across the EU. According to the Witch Report of 2018, the Wiesmann Boiler gained Best Boiler Reviews and has grown to become the most reliable boiler in the whole of the UK market. The four main things, reliability, availability of parts, after sales service and warranties are the main things that have made Wiesmann one of the major players in the UK market. The best range of boilers from Wiesmann is the Vitadin's range of boilers which is highly efficient and of course a rated. This boiler comes with a standard 5 year warranty but can easily be upgraded to a 10 year warranty. So that's a quick look at the boilers. Let's have a look at the pros and cons, and as usual, let's start with the pros first. The boiler has a stainless steel heat exchanger, but for some reason not all the ranges have stainless steel heat exchangers. They are the number two market leader in Europe. They produce high quality, very high efficient boilers. As I've said, the warranties can be easily extended to 10 years. Let's have a look at the cons then. They have still got quite a few complaints about faulty boilers. Again, the diverter valve is the most common part of the boiler that fails. Again, this is probably due to old dirty systems. They are expensive to purchase both for the boiler and for spare parts afterwards. They don't produce a lot of range of boilers. They only make three combi boilers. So that's a look at the Wiesmann boilers. Now let's finish off by summarising hopefully what we've learned from this video. First of all, is this such thing as which is the best boiler in the UK for 2020? Well yes there is, but it's which boiler suits you if you're a customer or suits you if you're an installer. There are loads of boilers out there on the market as you found out. You've just seen the top five selling boilers in the UK, but does that make them the best boiler for you? Okay. Do you require a combi boiler? Do you require a system boiler? Or do you require heat only boiler? It all depends on the size of the property, 
the output you require and your budget. That is one of the most important things. What budget do you have? Okay. So hopefully you've liked this video. And if you have liked this video, give me that thumbs up because it shows me you care. Or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to our channel yet, then please subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because we release videos every Wednesday. All I've got left to say is thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And stay safe out there, guys. Cheers.